This is the tree, one of the two of the package of trees we bought from the keeper's nursery. They come in this packaging, packaged in hay. That was really good because it saved them from frost. And now I'm going to open them. The packaging now is opened. Beautiful hay. Good root systems. Right sized trees. And uh, now the time to open. The trees I've received from them are very good, like the other time I bought from them. And I have also two Iranian medlars. Uh, they're the right size. It's both a little bit toward the smallish, but uh, we will see how they do here. And also one apple, that's the apple topaz. It's a really good size, I'm happy with that. Bagging the hay is for the chickens, as a bedding. Yeah. It's lovely. Yeah. And these are the white currant and red currant that I bought also from Blackmore Nursery. Five pound only each. Really good value, I'm saying. Apple variety, two pounds. It's from East Europe, former Soviet bloc countries. It has been bred by selective breeding and uh, it gives a very good apple it's a late apple and it's resistance to many diseases and it's a good specimen it's almost yeah six foot tall 1.80 meters and uh, I bought it from the keeper's nursery in Kent. Very good joint. Look at this joint. It's beautiful. And these are the food pots which will give me food next year. I mean, next <laughs> year here, but. Uh, uh, it's actually next to spring. And summer. Beautiful. Apple variety topos. From Czech Republic, former Soviet Union bloc. Very hardy and late cropping apple. And look at the beautiful joint. I bought this from the keeper's nursery. It's a two years old bush. I will let it probably without pruning go for this year next year I will I will do some pruning formative pruning just to let it establish itself the leaves do photosynthesis the roots grow and uh, we will see how it is doing okay this is the apple variety topaz that I planted this year I bought it from the keepers nursery very good healthy tree Two years old bush, but look look at the good size of the trunk. It's about one inch thick. So this tree needs a bigger uh, tree tie. So this is a uh, stake I put for this. It's quite chunky. It's made of the hazelnut, Shropshire uh, chestnut. And uh, as you see, it's really thick. It will not uh, decompose in the harsh weather. So I'm using a bigger tree trunk for this, as you can see, it's quite bigger, chunkier, and that will keep the tree uh, safe from the 
any accidental damage or wind wind or storm damage as you know in the winter we have very strong winds in the UK so that will help the tree especially in the first year now as you see I've applied the tree trunk uh, tree tie to the trunk of the tree this is a stake chestnut and uh, this is the actual tree and this is the tree tie I used here quite a strong bond between them now through this hopefully this will last and I, I was talking about accidental damage look what happened accidental damage this was after one day after I noticed that there is a uh, good branch of this tree had a damage I don't know if it was in mine or during the delivery anyway uh, it was not very bad so I tried to actually repair it with a little bit of the seal and heel well covered now and hopefully this branch will uh, give me good leaf and good growth uh, I'm not expecting this tree give me any food this year but it gives me that will be here somewhere one of these branch branches here or oh, even this is a food bath systems Anyway, that's the tree tie for the apple variety topos. Um, I'm now going to prune the apple variety topos that I have, the tree. And uh, I don't want to let it actually go vertically upward. I want to encourage it to have this way, outward all the way some new branches I don't think this has this here any fruit but so that's the way to encourage to actually to have some fruit but for next year so at the moment this part goes this way and that will be what I want and the rest of it I will do the following years so I don't want to do very radical pruning and uh, just to do some experiment okay I pruned here now Now, I will do some for other buds here. For example, this bud here goes this way. So, I will just cut it from here. This, uh, this one is too close to the main trunk so let me see I will try to prune it from this way so this butt goes this way the rest of it I will do in summer I will cut it in an, at an angle so now I have some very good butts here but uh, are not in the exactly the best positions so I will leave this one it looks very healthy I will cut from here so we will see how it grows the same for this branch this Parts are growing here, that one is going inward. This one here. So I'll cut it from above here. And of course, I will apply the 
also this this part is growing this way so I will cut from here about this one looks very healthy branch here all through it but what I want is that it gives me give me some branches this way and if it is possible this way or that way but nothing inward and nothing upward which makes it beyond the limit that we can have a tree in a lot so what I will do I will prune it from here I don't want to be very uh, radical prune to do very radical pruning here just cut it from here okay that's a good cut I will do with this branch also some uh, pruning this spot is toward outward, that is inward, that is outward. So, not to lose much, I will just prune from here. That is where I will prune. And now the main stem has remained here. For this one, what I have to do is try to figure out which way I want to let it grow okay I will have branches around here all coming from this side one so um, any branches from here will go the next terrace here so I will not do very radical pruning here mm -hmm. okay there is a part which has been it is not very good, but or is it? I don't want it really to go very high. And I want to have branches to work with for the next years. So if I let it, it go, goes upward, uh, which is what I don't want. So I will, I will prune it probably from here and in the summer I may do another summer pruning another pruning for summer I'll cut it from here okay let me just go a little bit down there okay that's also done now so as far as I can see, this tree is now has a good shape, as far as I can see and judge. So, also I have a branch here which is rubbing against this other one. There is a fruit bud here. Okay, I will try. Hello. I will try to keep the fruit bud, but but this one because it's rubbing against this other branch so what I will do I will cut it from here hoping that this part will grow upward and what about this one what I can do here I think I will leave this one, let it grow. It's going in the right direction. The good part here. I will let it go in this direction. And uh, yeah, I think that I will just leave it. Just this one is dry now. I will cut that one also. And this one also is in the wrong place, it's going inward. I will prune that. And that's it. Now, contrary to what I thought, maybe have some fruit buds here and here. We will see. We will see in the spring how it's doing. Yeah. Now, 
looking back, the tree looks better. Uh -huh. Yeah, not very bad. I could have cut this a little bit more, but I don't want to risk it. Just I will leave it like that until later to see how it is doing. Okay, this is the apple variety topaz. And I was thinking that this tree will not have any fruit bud or just a few. And look at it. It's full of fruit buds. So, what I learned is that the fruit buds in the topaz apple look different to others. And as you see, all along the branch, the branches, they have fruit buds. So it's not a tip bearer, like some. It's a spore, spore and tip bearer. So all along the wood, it brings some fruit buds and blossoms eventually. It's a beautiful tree. Big, lovely sample. There are a lot of ants here, so I have to attach something easy just to stop them from moving. Moving upward. This is the apple variety Topaz. Topaz is an apple from the Czech Republic, as they say. The colors of the fruit pods is a uh, Pinkish, when they're not open, they're red, beautiful red, like this one. But when they open, they're white, pinkish, slightly pinkish. And as you see on the sh uh, where the fruit buds are, are appearing, where the blossoms are now, as you can see, it is a tip and spore bearer. All along the branch, there are fruit blossoms. So, this must be a very productive tree. This is a, by the way, uh, eating apple, dessert apple, or dessert apple. And uh, comparing it with a discovery apple, I will show you. Apple variety. It's an early apple. Uh, topaz is a late, um, mid or late, mid to late uh, fruit apple bearer. And uh, this is a tip, uh, tip bearer discovery. Uh, the fruit buds, when they're not open, they're very pale pink. When they're open, they're almost white. A little bit here, here and there, some tinges of the pink. But the rest of it is uh, white. And I just want to see if they... Oh, I smell... oh yeah, they smell like rose. I never thought about that. That just smells is like rose. I heard that the people in ancient times or through natural selection, hybridization naturally, in the Middle East, what we call as Middle East is wrong, Southwest Asia, especially in the plateau of Iran, they developed the apple in this way. And it is spread to Central Asia and uh, many fruits, actually many of the common fruits originate from there, not exotic ones, from tropicals. And it's just strange that in modern times we have not been able to produce any any hybridization that creates a, from a non-edible uh, fruit uh, from a tree an edible and commercially viable fruit. So ancients were really a thumbs up for them. And uh, compare that topaz again with the uh, bountiful, which is a cooking apple. Of course, this is trained in this spalier way, so practically a different arrangement. But you see, again, it's almost not very different. Uh, it's again uh, tip and spore bearer, it means that along the trunk, along the branches, it gives blossom, also on the tip, it gives blossom. Okay, this is now 31st of July 2015. Uh, this is the apple variety topaz that I planted this year. I bought it from the uh, keeper's nursery. 
And this was the one that I thought that uh, will not give us much fruit because the uh, the things which I thought were leaf uh, were fruit bud, they were leaf bud. They were actually didn't look like fruit buds. So I didn't expect it to give any fruit, but here we are. Look, it's full of fruits. The tree is, uh, is about uh, yeah five foot uh, ten inches high. As you see, the fruit has uh, some beautiful coloring. Is yet not uh, uh, ready to pick up. It has uh, many, probably a lot to go. Uh, the fruit, as you see, is a little bit flat. It has some red russeting, red uh, coloring on this and the others. Um, yeah, it's round, it's well shaped, as the example here shows. And uh, it's a good tree. What I thought were leaf buds actually turned out to be lots of fruit buds. And uh, probably if I didn't uh, prune it, it would give you more fruit. But anyway, you here you are, you see. It's already giving lots of fruits. First year, planted in uh, February 2015. And now in July 2015, count it. I think it's about 20 fruits here at least, if not more. So, this is the apple tree that I recommend. Topaz is the apple from Czech Republic. And I wholeheartedly recommend this apple. Unless I come across the something else which uh, will change my mind, and that is to see how they taste. This is what they look. They're at the moment they're smallish, but uh, yeah. Here we see how they do. Um, yeah, I noticed that whenever the weather forecast, BBC especially, says there is a storm Oh, we will expect this amount or that amount of record breaking rain. It never actually materializes. But it makes you feel, if you are retired or anything, that you, you're completely safe. You're cozy sitting in your home, feeling that, oh, I'm so happy that BBC is in charge. The weather outside, yeah. House in chaos, and I'm warm and snug inside. But actually, look at it. This is the storm they were predicting. Sometimes a few drizzles, but no rain or storm to the amount that the BBC predicted. Okay, so should you trust them? It's up to you. Uh, what I'm talking to them about now is the Apple variety topaz because I have noticed some changes in them. Some flush of red. Beautiful. And this is a tree I bought from the keeper's nursery. It's a good balanced tree actually. I'm really impressed. The trees I bought from the Blackboard nursery were not as anything as good as this. I mean, they were spaliers, first of all. They give fruit in the first year, but in the second year may not be as good, though they give too much. But the tree is too small. And also it's M27. But look at this topaz. This is an M26, I think. Uh, rootstock. I'm talking these M's reference to rootstocks. And look at the well-balanced tree. I trimmed it, actually. I pruned it in the winter. I wish I didn't, but anyway, it was right. And look at it, how balanced is the tree, and what a good amount of fruits it has. And the fruits gradually come into, to change color from the greens that they were. Topaz is actually a, a eating apple from the Czech Republic, it's a kind of late apple, mid to late apple. And I'm really impressed with the way it is. Keeper's Nursery, number one for me 
the fruit trees. The catalog is definitely the, the, the must look at because uh, you cannot find uh, anything better than that in any book, any other internet source. Whenever I want to know about uh, any fruit tree, I go to Keeper's Nursery. Today is the 20th of the September 2015. It's just one day before the autumnal equinox and end of the summer. It is the last day of the summer 2015. And I'm now showing you the apple variety topaz. And as you see, it is midway of being ripened. So it looks uh, pretty much uh, beautiful. A bit beautiful red russet. Red flush and some russeting. Not all of them, of course, are ripened. But that's the situation of the tree. Now I go for the next tree. Today is the 28th of the November 2015. It's a very cold day, relatively of course for Britain. Uh, and uh, I can show you this topaz apple. There is no ap other apple left on the tree at the moment. So this is the only apples which are yet on the tree. And I can say and I can confirm that this has beaten in longevity of the apples on the tree, the apple variety King, Winter King or Winston, as uh, Stephen Hayes called Winter King is a long lasting apple. What you can see here that the topaz easily beats that and it's a delicious apple. Now we are going to harvest at least one of these. I want to see if I can drag this until the uh, let me say December at least December 1st no Susan do you want to harvest this please one of these thank you we will have this in our home enjoying it oh another one well okay two of them so we have these two apples can I see every every side of it uh -huh. oh it looks beautiful yeah and you see this is almost damage free, although this has been here for for now probably about six months. More than six months. Yeah. Beautiful apple. We have now a video, complete video series from the blossom and winter. Uh, how winter pruning, pruning and then going for the uh, flower smells and the uh, blossoms season, then early apple, then middle. Now it is ripe and it is now the late season. And you see this apple is yet beautifully perfect for eating ready. Despite that we didn't use any chemicals on this tree. And this is in first year it is giving this apple. And even the chickens are enjoying Sometimes the apples fall there and they just enjoy it. So topaz apple this year is the number one apple for taste, uh, for longevity and for last on the tree. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, uh, I was after a late variety of apple and uh, I watched the videos of the Stephen Hayes. Uh, Dr. Stephen Hayes, who has a orchard in the Hampshire, and uh, he was recommending as a late uh, apple go for the, I mean in his videos, not personally, uh, go for um, Winter King or Winston, and this is now uh, 18 I think of the or 17 of the October. This is the condition of the apple. Winter King, of course, no scab or anything. It's very low, it's about yeah, less than a hand from the ground, full of chickens around it. But look at the condition of it, it is red almost. And I have another apple variety which I show that it goes even a little later than this. This is the apple variety Topaz. And as you see, some of it is already ready, some of it is yet, yet to go, as you see here and here in the center. 
So, it's either at the same time, or as late as the Winter King, or even a little bit later. That's an interesting apple. But look at the beauty of this apple. It's the first year, and it has given these beautiful apples. I'm going to harvest one of these just to enjoy. This one looks red enough. Or is it? This is one of the largest ones actually. Okay, I'm going to harvest this. Okay, a good apple when it is ripe, it just easily falls. It's not falling, so I'm not going to take it. I think this can go actually a little bit longer. I will leave it. Oh, no, I will try again to harvest this one. <laughs> I cannot resist. It's early morning, and it's the best thing to have an apple in early morning. Yeah, came off. Beautiful looking apple. Red flush, some yellows. The skin is a little bit bumpy, but that's what I like. Uh, it's fresh. At the same time, look at the shape of it. It's a bit flattish, like a discovery almost. But discovery has a very smooth skin and it uh, ripens in the early August. So. This is now 18 of the October, and it looks uh, beautiful. I'm going to have a, uh, have a bite. Mmm, so fresh. Mmm, a very pleasant acid, but sweet also at the same time. And the flesh is a uh, yellowish cream. Colored. Mm. I like this crunchy. Mmm. Very juicy for a late apple. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, very nice. I, I must say, personally, I like juicy apples. Okay, today is the 2nd of the December 2015 and this is the longest apple, longest lasting apple I've ever seen. Only crab trees may last as long as this. This apple, Topaz, from Czech Republic, look at it, it has lasted up to now. And yet it has one, this is in first year of the tree of course, one, two, three, four, five, six apples yet are in this tree. We have eaten uh, many of the other apples, so that's doing well for this time of the year. It's very cold now, I mean, relatively for Britain. And yet the topaz apple is going on. It's continuing triumphantly. the beautiful color of this apple, the beautiful flushes of red and yellow. That's the perfect thing for painting. If you like painting, <laughs> paint this one. They look beautiful, very apple-y. Yeah, I may take this one just for the sake of it, just to eat. Topaz, after five or six months being on the tree, this is the way it is. And of course, I've not added any chemicals. Oh, sweet, juicy. Mmm, mmm. Juicy and sweet. Lovely apple. Uh, 
and this is a video about uh, three varieties of apple and tasting them and comparing them. The first variety is from our own garden. It has been, yeah, I harvested it. Look, a little bit rotten because I kept it for probably one week. It had a little blemish. But anyway, it is here. This is called Topaz. This is what we bought from Morrison. Uh, it's called Fuji Apple, and this is Royal Gala. Uh, I'm going now to uh, cut them and uh, have a slice. Okay, uh, I have now cut the uh, three varieties of apple. This is the Topaz. This is the Fuji we bought from Morrison. This is Royal Gala we bought again from Morrison. This is from our own allotment. So the Topaz is from the allotment. I'm tasting it. The color is a kind of creamy yellow or straw color. Mm. Sweet. We delivered slightly acid sweet. Taste. Very juicy, pleasant. Mm, I like it. Mm, okay. This is Fuji apple. The apple looks like this itself. As you see, slightly lighter in color than the topaz. Texture is a bit coarser. Okay, I'm going now for tasting. Mmm, very sweet. Pleasant and fruity. Okay, topaz compared to this Fuji is a little bit sharp. Fuji more pleasant and apple And this is a sharp but more. Relatively juicy. If I want to rate it as juiciness, this one is about, yeah, 7 out of 10. This is about 5 out of 10. Now, I go for a Royal Gala. Um, yeah, almost the same color as the Topaz. This one is the same color as the Topaz. Royal Gala, same color as Topaz. Texture very softer, not as much as sweet of either of them, but not bad, it's pleasant. That's the cheapest apple you can buy in the supermarket. I think that if I want to rate them, Okay, the apple I like more at this moment of time because it's sweeter is a Fuji, although it is shop bought and it has been there for more than a week now. I like it. This one is nice. It's a bit sharper than the Fuji's. Fuji don't have any acid. This is a little bit sharper than that Fuji. It's sweet, juicy, good. I've grown it trouble free. Fuji, I don't know about the growing of it. If you grow it, how how is it? This is resist. Is it this? Is, this is resistant. Is it easy to grow? You need a lot of uh, fertilizer. Do you need a lot of pesticide using fungicide using on it? This one I didn't do anything. I just put the tree in the soil. In the first year, it gave me this fruit. About twenty or so, twenty five more apples it gave me. I didn't do anything for the tree. Practically true, trouble free. Fuji. I don't know about it. I've not grown it, but the taste is good. Better than that. If I want to taste, otherwise rate them. This is about eight. This is about seven. This is about five. So real girl of five, eight, seven. I can put this one eight and a half and give this eight or seven and a half. Hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I will increase this to eight. Yeah, eight and a half, eight. They are different in a way because that is a little bit sharper. This is doesn't have any acid. It's just sweet. Fuji eight and a half. This is eight, and that is five. What I've told you is just about growing, um, 
tasting them, growing them. I don't know about any one of these except this one. Trouble free, reliable cropper. And as you see, good apple, large. This one tastes all right, but I don't know if you have to use a lot of fertilizer or pesticide. Definitely this is sweeter. This is sweet and a little bit sharper. Um, this is a video comparing um, the taste of two varieties of apple. Mainly the main point of me is the uh, apple variety Topaz from the Czech Republic. I bought a tree from the keeper's nursery in its first year. It gave probably about 30 apples. And uh, yeah, and I compared it with a, uh, some little apple from the what I got from the Asta as a tree two years ago. First year, uh, it didn't give any fruit. This year, it gave some fruit. They were very small. But anyway, we now taste them. Uh, uh, the Topaz is a, is a very good apple. It's almost scab resistant. Unfortunately, that suffered a few things from the finger insects or probably chickens touching it. Uh, but anyway, it looks red with lots of uh, uh, red flush. Uh, some greens and yellows the apple is a little bit flat good eye and uh, generally looking nice apple what an apple should I? Uh, this is also similar to the jana gold jana gold or yana gold is a flattish apple is a little bit of long in, in i mean deformed in this um, specimen and uh, i tasted it already and now I'm going to taste it. Uh, this is a smaller sample. Much of it is uh, uh, green or yellow, mostly yellow, and uh, at least one, more than one third of it, near half of it, is uh, red. Some damage there also. The purpose is to help the people, if they want to buy it and choose a tree, to know what they are doing for, what taste they are going for. If you cannot go to Apple Day, that's the way. Watch my videos. Okay, I have now made uh, one cut in each apple and I'm going to taste it now. Now first I start from this one, uh, which is the apple variety topaz from the Czech Republic and bought from the Keeper's Nursery. The flesh, as you see, is kind of yellowish white and uh, it looks uh, relatively juicy. Yeah, actually juicy. I'm now going to taste it. Very juicy. Like I said, this apple is very is good for juicing. Taste wise, it's sweet. With the, at the end, slight acidic. The skin is not tough; it's pleasant. It's what an apple should taste. Now I'm going for the yana gold. I just calm the apple. The texture of the apple itself is similar to a little bit finer the texture of the surface is a little bit finer than the um, topaz and the color is a uh, yellowish almost green near the skin is greener inside of the apple you see the seed and the cell what is called the cell with that halo around the seed container and here the seed container actually is hidden behind the little flesh of the apple okay i'm not going to uh, taste this very cool sweet i like it not as juicy as the topaz, but quite sweet, pleasant. I must say that if I want to rate these apples, this is eight, that is nine. That's a good apple. Or eight and a half. Jana Gold is a good apple, or Jana Gold. Mm. So sweet. Pleasant. By the way, today is the 23rd of the October, so I cut this apple probably two or three years ago. And this one I cut it yesterday, I think. 
I prefer both of them. This is tasty, sweet, very juicy, good for juicing. This is very tasty. Eight out of ten, eight and a half out of ten. Uh, I like both of them. They're good apples. But this one, the tree from the keepers, uh, from the Asta supermarket, or Walmart, as you know, in America, and this one from the keepers nursery, a two-year-old tree, a uh, one-year-old tree. Sorry. Uh, 